Greetings and salutations, all you lovely individuals. Welcome back to League Online. My name is Eric Flynn, Han Solo on today's epi as we check in on the LPL because let's be honest, we haven't really talked about or touched on the transition into the actual summer season. We're no longer in fearless, fearless draft. We've had some of the frauds come away with big wins. We're talking Weibo Gaming. We're talking LNG, who both started 1-0. And surprisingly, JDG was on the receiving end of one of those two zeros, courtesy of Weibo, looking for a bounce back against FPX, and who also started 0-1, by the way. And we continue to see for JDG, maybe not the cleanest on rift product uh, that we're accustomed to seeing out of them but we at least continue to see uh, mr kanavi make his mvp case for this year in the lpl and most importantly we continue to see the rookie sheer starting in that top lane sure it's just a Cassante in game three but he the talent continues to be there continues to see its growth uh, the more and more games he actually gets on the rift because he was absorbing so much pressure uh, in a lot of these team fights in 1v4 scenarios. You're going to see how deep he dives to get a kill onto Milky Way for this one. He does eventually end up going down, but uh, Ruler, this combo of the Karthus and Jin in this third game was absolutely deadly. It felt like guys were at 40% health escaping a fight and then they would eventually uh, get shot down and bursted from yeah about 17 screens away. It's immeasurable how far away Karthus ulti is, but as all good Karthus players do, just spamming the ulti off cooldown to boost those DPM numbers, but uh, this fight was actually absolutely missing, finding a nice engage on the rail, and that eventually netted him MVP for this game, despite Milky Way three levels down on Kanavi coming in and somehow securing a 100 HP smite steal. He thought maybe, possibly, perhaps, this was an angle uh, for FPX to get back into this game, but wasn't meant to be. Even with a Baron steal going over to uh, JDG, the power play was not much out of FPX. They were hardly able to get uh, past the river with it because JDG was in such control as the Skittles are landing for Kanavi to Gao. It was Tristana Corky matchup switching who had those uh, in all three games for this one. But JDG gets back on the board. But again, they continue to be, I'm going to call them a little bit sus so far here uh, in the summer split. And even in some of their wins in the first round that was fearless, a tiny bit teensy tiny bit sus as well but again sheer starting we're very happy about ruler looked good on Jin. i know people have been calling we're not seeing the same world beater best in the world type scenario uh out of ruler or level of play that we've seen i mean it's just go back to last year the near golden road for jdg obviously a lot of that is with the solo laners being swapped out and i think there's no question ruler is Absolutely still one of the premier uh, 80 carries and just players on the planet. Um, but yeah, Yagao didn't die in that third game. So we march onwards, does JDG. We'll continue to check in on the LPL throughout and see. Uh, of course, Fraud Watch is the most fun to check into when you're talking about both uh, Weibo LNG. Throw in NIP, who dropped one of their first games as well. But they're back in the full swing of the schedule here for the main actual summer split so we're actually going to be getting good matchups in the LPL it's not uh the top teams beating up on some of the lower tier squads which we are blessed and very happy about of course thank you based LPL a little T1 Academy check in because we had a big time comeback for Reckless and the boys against Honda Life we're jumping into game two for this one and it's I mean there's multiple plays you can talk about being quote unquote a bit of a miracle performance but it starts with them having a kind of immaculate uh, base defense and then they need to kind of have a pretty insane barren steal out of Mr. Gu Wan who is still riding high excuse me on a buff from playing on the T1 main roster but uh, almost 10k down was T1 at one point in this set you got reckless you don't see this Alistair Jin pairing 
uh, too often, but we saw Ruler piloting that gin pretty damn well, and Smash absolutely was doing some nasty gin late game damage in this one. It is Doll who kind of closes things out, but 10k down, Miraculous Baron Steel, a team fight that they have absolutely no business winning. Eventually, Reckless is the guy who actually picks up player of the game for this one. He was 1-0 and 10 for a calm, cool, and collected 100% kill participation in this one five and two now for t1 academy which i'm pretty sure they're one win away from matching their spring win total which was six i think they went six and twelve they got d plus kia challengers on the schedule next which are the only team ahead of them in the standings but man listen reckless continues to improve his career and if you've seen any of the behind the scenes for the t1 academy stuff he's He's speaking it pretty damn well uh, over there. So obviously he seems happy. He seems like he's meshing well with the team. And who knows what will be uh, in 2025 for Reckless. But I imagine he's going to be getting a starting spot in a major region A tier uh, league. Whether that's in the LCK if his career improves on a middle of the pack LCK team or potentially a upper half LEC team uh, comes reaching out to him, but he continues to grow well, continues uh, to look fantastic, and the rest of the T1 Academy boys do as well. We switched pivot to the T1 main roster, who we got to highlight how ludicrous this scheduling is in the LCK. T1, fresh off going to the Esports World Cup, they're in the finals on the Sunday, they win the whole thing, and how are they rewarded? by playing on not just the first day uh, of the next week returning to the LCK, but they're the first match against Freddie Brion. It feels like the scheduling here is absolutely insane that they don't give them, at least Gen G has a Thursday match. Even that seems a little bit quick, but the unbelievable turnaround. Three days ago, playing in finals to now they're right back on the rift of the LCK. So I am not expecting much out of T1 uh, in that matchup. Having to fly back home, barely even being able to be settled before you're back on the rift. It seems like a huge swing in the miss. Where, where's the hindsight? They knew this tournament was coming for a long time because you look even on the other side of things, uh, if you're looking at Top Esports and BLG for the LPL, the LPL summer season was already going on, basically, when the Esports World Cup started up. Top Esports and Billy Billy, the two squads that went to EWC, they're not playing until Friday. And obviously this was built into the LPL scheduling because a squad like anyone's legend will have played three full best of series before TES or BLG have suited up for a match on the Rift. So seems like the LPL understood what the scheduling was going to be like and gave their two top seeds a little bit of leeway. Uh, LCK says, you know what, T1, you're our biggest source of income, the biggest brand by a factor of 10. We'll get you on the Rift day one because we can't wait to see you in some of these matchups. Just seems absolutely insane that they're uh, slotting them into that first it couldn't even give them a couple extra hours sleep or preparation dropping them in on the first day against OK Savings Bank Brion obviously this huge L uh, out of the LCK or I mean it's a win for the LCK it's an L for T1 who already far and away we talked about this going back to even before the spring split started they won the world championship they go to this Red Bull event in December before January even starts. And then they're into the spring split a few weeks later. It feels like the off season for T1 was basically three weeks for these players. When you count all the post Worlds press media type stuff that they did. Worlds went into the start of November. It's an absolutely insane schedule, and it's only been more packed here in the spring and summer splits. Going to MSI, going to the Esports World Cup, probably going to go deep in LCK summer. Probably most definitely going to be going to the World Championship. So truly, truly hope that the boys are okay in terms of burnout and their mental is there because the most insane schedule of any professional team in 2024 so far has been T1 and somehow some way the on-riff product for them 
has not suffered. Uh, so we'll be right back for LCK action this week as things roll up again. We're going to have a D-plus Gen-G showdown over the weekend. LPL's already revved up, as I said. Got to wait a little bit for the LCS, but the LEC is right into playoffs this re weekend. So really a not even break for this World Cup as most of these regions gear right back into their summer splits. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric, and thank you so much to all you lovely individuals, individuals for hanging out as always. And you best believe that we will catch you on that flippity flip.